Hey, leuk dat je luistert naar de Katkomo podcast. This is a new episode of the Katkomo podcast. And today we are talking English because I have a very special guest. And her name is Minke Tromp. Hello, Minke. Welcome in the show. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, Minke. We met in uh, Miami uh, yes. last October. Uh, we were at a um, mastermind and it was really cool. Uh, so I know you a little bit, <laughs> but tell me a little bit more about yourself. <laughs> Introduce yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thanks um yeah so the the name is really dutch and i am dutch i mean um people always ask whether i am a family of the sea hero you know and, and so i used to be really proud of that name but then there was a certain person in the world who kind of troubled that pride Um, but uh, yeah, that was similar to my name. Um, and uh, uh, I'm a philosopher, really, uh, Kat. I am um, uh, a philosopher with ambitions. I want to uh, change the world, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Think big. Think big. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that uh, that's actually what I, what I want. Yeah, so I never... I never really understood why philosophers um, don't do anything. I never, I never, I mean, obviously that's a generalization and there are some exceptions, but roughly speaking, philosophers tend to, you know, take some tax money and then read and write very complicated books for other people who read and write very complicated books. <laughs> that's a strange thing to do i mean yes in that niche it might feel really important but for the rest of the world you know it doesn't really matter let's face it it doesn't really matter what philosophers write and then i don't understand because some of them write really important things like on justice or on freedom or on power. And if you read and write books on that type of stuff and you really feel that you find important insights or notions on that, those type of themes, how can you turn off the light at the end of the day and go to your home as if nothing of all that has anything to do with your life outside university? I don't get it. <laughs> So that was like a big frustration for me when I studied philosophy. And um, um, yeah, at the same time, I was working part-time um, at HP, Judith Packard. And there I had this business environment. And there I was baffled that these managers never really stop and think. So I wanted to, you know, uh, try to find these two worlds to connect them in a certain way and that's like a that's like a nutshell what i would love to do i would love to connect the world of impact with the world of wisdom so yeah cool. and then on a global scale please <laughs> <laughs> and ninka how do you do that <laughs> tell me your secret <laughs> I'm, i'm trying to find out how to do it okay so i'm making an effort to do that Yeah, and, well, you're uh, doing. <laughs> I'm sorry? You're doing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. But um, I, don't, um, I don't know yet how to do that on such a big scale. But um, we are doing it in the Netherlands with our leadership course. We have a leadership program called Wisdom and Impact. Um, and we have a community, and that's an international community connecting for thinkers from around the globe. Now, this is only a few months old, so this also getting started. But then we have like over 600 members in four months. So I think that's a quite a nice number. Um, uh, and that's, that's the ways that we try to do it. And at the center of it all, I think there should be question series. 
like practices, series of questions that one can ask himself that will bring some deeper insight on how to live, basically. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's, wow. um, that's, uh, that's actually what we are we're doing. So, Minka, you're doing that with the team and with the community? Uh, yes. Yes. We, um, I used to have like a relatively small team. Um, but now that we are running an international online community, to me, it makes sense to have also an international online team. Um, and to, uh, I'm building that. Um, and now we are, I think, with nine uh, people. And we're changing all the time. So it's, it's constant looking for, I mean, we just changed social media manager and that's, it's like such an important role. So if that changes, you know, you might need to make other changes as well. It's, it's, um, it's quite a process. And I think actually I'm, I'm beginning to enjoy that too. You know, first it was just a hassle, like get yourself organized. And now I'm beginning to enjoy that too as a, it's it's a bit like a big game, like um, uh, how to make this work. You know, it's like a it's like a quiz. That's the best. That's the better word. It's like a yeah. like yeah. an exciting quiz. Like okay, so I have my business manager. He's like the the main person, and then um, I have like the moderator for the community. Very important role. Um, then there there is a designer. There's an SEO person. There's a few more of these like a online support type of guys. Um, but but I find it, uh, I find it uh, also a lot of fun to do that internationally. I mean, then also you meet all kinds of people with different points of views and yeah, try to make it work, you know? Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Minka, um, my podcast is, uh, is about um, uh, riches in the broad sense of the world, word and um well that's also about money yes so i was curious what uh -huh. did you did you learn about money uh from your parents or from your environment hmm hmm well i think well um i think money is it's changed in meaning for me, definitely, throughout the past like ten years. But as a as a as a child, you know, I used to have these dreams that I was um, crawling under the table when there was a party or a gathering or whatever, and then I had these dreams that I was so it was hidden that I would find money under the table. And then there were all kinds of coins, like like in corners, and I had to like sneak around <laughs> and find myself some money. So there was some kind of shame on it, I guess. I mean, there was we didn't have like uh, we weren't poor. We had we had quite some money, um, but. Um, but we didn't talk about it as in, like, how can I get some, you know? We didn't talk about it that way. And um, actually, actually, now I do, and I, I love that conversation. But every now and then you run into people, well, actually, quite, quite often you meet people who do not talk about money that way. Like, just a simple question, like, how can I get some so I can get things done? Um, that's still a bit of a taboo, you know, it's, it's the English word, I think, yes, still, still, yeah. still the word. But we do not really, it's not a light subject, it's always a heavy subject. And yeah. also in, in these dreams, so I, I can't really remember what, what my father said or what my mother said, but these dreams were rather significant. And I wanted some money, but I had to go and sneak under the table to find some, you know? Interesting. So, <laughs> so sounds like it's a little bit of it was a little bit of a mystery to you, <laughs> like, and what you say, like how to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's nice, nice analysis. 
nice analysis. Yes, because from pocket money, you know, that would never take me where I wanted to go. You know, that was like a little something that would never yeah. do. And um, I'm, I'm still, still constantly thinking about uh, how can I get some more? <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's such a nice thing you know and i'm not the type of person who would like like five cars i don't even have a car um but i do need the means yes yes i um i have so many plans you know i um uh... yeah i understand i totally understand and also i think it's interesting because like in the bubble of the philosopher's world <laughs> i think yeah. money is like uh not a subject exactly like exactly. and it's it's very well actually it's actually it is a subject in the philosopher's world it's even there was a unesco report i'll tell you about and that was when was that i think 2003 or something that was the first time that unesco got um got a got a scent of the world of philosophical practitioners Right, so that was like a new thing, more more or less, because obviously Socrates was also a practitioner. But beside him, um, that was like this new scene coming up, and UNESCO wrote a report about it. Um, for some reason, they thought they had to spend tax money on a subject like that. Nobody knows why, but that's what they did. And there, it was a chapter in itself whether or not a philosopher was allowed to ask for money for his service. Wow. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. And that is like a heated debate. So amongst philosophers, um, they don't really like me because I'm not an academic and then you're not a good philosopher. So when, you're, when you refuse to do the university trick, you know, you're, you're not really good. And uh, also <laughs> they don't really like me because I live off, uh, I'm like independent, you know, I don't need tax money from somebody else to, yeah. um, and, you know, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I, I make it work for myself too. And um, that some of them have really strong opinions about it because truth and money, they say, don't go together very well. Ooh. Uh-huh. Interesting stuff. That's like a huge assumption. That's like a, also like a, what is that called? Uh, an um, well, it's old thinking. <laughs> exactly. I just it's put a judgment on it. Sorry, I did. <laughs> no, it's fine. You know, but it's it's yeah. they, that's so biased, and yeah. it's it's so interesting because they claim that with the money factor in the practice you will be biased yeah. but they are so biased by claiming that you cannot be unbiased when there is money in the practice that's yeah. that's like really really but their opinions are so strong on the subject that you you can't really have like an interesting conversation about it because they just you know. yeah so i just let it be it's fine they're free i'm yeah. free whatever you want yeah but um yeah yeah that's a strong subject there that's true yeah, interesting path you chose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because I was just thinking like, um, yeah, it's just a different way of 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 using a, a philosophy in in a practical way. And with the money subject, um, what what do you spend money on if you have it? Well, I invest, I have, I have a system where what I need like privately to buy some clothes and I like some nice clothes and I have, you know, for the house and we have children. So there is like, there is some um, fixed amount each month that I need for, for expenses like that. And the rest I invest in that community and that mission of ours to, to build the whole thing. Like, like I'm still getting started, you know? Um, and um, um, I also have these ideas that there is there is CEOs that I really want to talk to, but obviously will not listen to me because they have no idea who I am and what my thinking is all about. 
that I just have to fly to their houses to get their attention and have the dialogue that I feel that we need to have. Um, so it's it's also like a bit like a wild stuff like that. Well, flying is not too wild, but doing having the means to do stuff like that. Um, yeah. I would I would uh, I would really like that. And um, um, I don't think I will buy so much more things. I'm looking at my, 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 my books right now. I think I wouldn't even buy more books. Publishers send me books so I can give refuse. And then I always want to send them back after reading it because I don't want the the actual object in my house. Um, so I don't really need things. It's more, it's more that, um, yeah, I would love to have like three social media managers, you know, <laughs> and uh, so it's, 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 it's for the team and it's for the, that's, I think that's what I would, that's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah, and also also to travel, but then always there is there is this part of the there's always an idealistical part to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. If if money was no issue, like if you had like plenty, 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 like the fountain would never stop giving you money. I would, my team would be bigger. So, so more things would have been taken care of for me, um, for sure. And I would, I would, um, I would call more powerful people like all the time to have the type of conversations that I feel that we need to have. Because I see this, this big problem in the establishment, having certain blind spots, but not seeing that they have blind spots. Obviously a blind spot you don't see, but they don't even assume that they have so many blind spots that it's worth making the effort to try to look into it. You know, So there's this, if you want to put it negatively, there's this arrogance to the establishment and how they um, look at their own thinking and um, that I really feel that I should be the person to wake them up. Um, and, and I would, um, if, 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 if there would be like, like a endless amount of money, time would not be such an important thing either. So I could just wait in the lobby of a bank until I get the appointment that I ask for. And also I would be a mother for a few hours a day, but not more. <laughs> so I think like three, four hours a day of motherhood is fine. I, I love doing that. Um, like yesterday we got a lot of plums, like, like the fruit, you know, and I will make marmalade from it today. I mean, I love that kind of thing. You know, the children will love it too. And, uh, that's fine, but for three, four hours a day. And now it's often more. And uh, I think uh, I think I would do that too. Yeah. And maybe I will rent like a, a dancing studios every now and then to do some uh, wild projects that um, I don't know what they will look like. With dancing. Because that's a that's also a passion of you, or yeah, yeah, cool. What kind of dancing? Because you have like so many. Types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that would be like modern ballet. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 So projects or like performances yeah. or. Yes. Yes, and they will probably have meaning as well. It will probably still be connected to philosophy because it always boils down to that in, in my case. But to try to, to dance like a freedom of mind or something like that, that would be, uh, that wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, 
I'm yeah. not a good enough dancer to, to dance myself, but then I'd have to, you know, find the right dancers and find the right uh, choreographer and, you know, find the right music and uh, make it all work. And that would be so amazing. Yeah. Nice, nice. Beautiful awesome. dreams. Yeah. 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 So, and, um, well, we talked about if money was no issue, but if money would be an issue and you only would have like $10, what would you spend it on? Like, I don't know, you, you maybe get more dollars later, but you don't know when. <laughs> so you have like this 10. And so like, what, 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 what are you going to do with it? Well, in that case, because, because I am also an entrepreneur, okay? So I'm also like, I also like that game. So I would probably, um, I don't know, buy a bag of apples and sell each apple for a bit more. Um, I don't know, something simple like that, you know, just to, um, or even, or probably I would even, um, do it. And I'm thinking <laughs> I would probably do it, uh, a bit smarter that I first go door to door to get the order for the apples. So I only need to do the investment after I have the order <laughs> and then I would, um, uh, bring them the apples but from their advance payment you know and i would maybe then use that ten dollars to buy myself a cup of coffee to think out the plan and uh, then execute it yeah yeah where did you learn this <laughs> i'm sorry where did you learn this who taught you <laughs> like that um i don't um I don't know actually because I never studied I never studied economy or or whatever or, or trade or something like that. But actually, if I would have, um, it's it's it might be true by the way that that if we have if I have like more time and 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 the business is running that I might like in ten years or something uh, start studying economy. Because I think money is fascinating as a theme also in society. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't have, I'm not from an entrepreneurial family or something, but um, I, like, I like this way of thinking. And I'm also trying to teach my children to um, think like that. Yeah, because look, sometimes I, I talk to entrepreneurs and they say like, yeah, I was like five and then I had a lemonade stand outside the house and like uh, on uh, on uh, King's Day I sell uh, whatever uh, is yeah. <laughs> is on demand, <laughs> and uh, I think that's very interesting because like when you learn it like at such a young age, uh, you will yeah you will be very good at it. <laughs> this yeah. way of thinking. So I'm very happy that you teach your children because I think it's a very, very important skill that like a lot of people lack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think so too. It's like our eldest now just turned 10 and she wanted her mobile phone. And um, um, we said that she could have it, but she had to give us 100 euros and then we would pay for the rest of the phone. So still 100 euros is like nothing for, for a phone. And then... Um, uh, but I wanted her to have the experience and the question, like, how do I get a hundred euros? Yeah. Yeah. How do I, what can I do? You know? And, um, and then she said, I can ask the neighbors. I said, yes, you could ask, but they probably say no. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah, but just try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe you cool. have to offer something. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, but it's good that, that, that you like experience the value of money. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. And um, like, if you find a 10 on the streets, what would you do with that? So it's like a present. <laughs> well, if I would, um, if I would be with my children, I would hint them as if they would find them. Okay. So, so I would love them to have like the, the, 
the big experience. But if I would be alone, I would probably buy flowers for myself. I would like, like, I like flowers, you know, as a, it's really like a treat, you know, like, like fresh, beautiful flowers on your table. If I, yeah, if I, that would be like a, like a little treat, because if you, if you would just buy groceries from that tenor, then it like loses its meaning, right? Because I can buy groceries that doesn't even seem like connected to money anymore. You know, you just click with, or we order online. So I just click what I want and yeah, somewhere there's the payment in the process. I don't even look at it, you know? So it's, um, then it would lose meaning. Um, but to buy flowers, I don't really do that like every week or something for myself. And that would be a treat. So, so yes, yes. But I would not like bring it to the police or something. Do people still do that? <laughs> Many people I, I interviewed, they they would look around like, who's it from? <laughs> um, Back to the questions. Um, Minka, what makes you rich? What makes you feel rich? You know, when I feel really rich, I feel really rich when um, when my question series work. Okay, so when I have like full members from the community or <clears throat> participants in our leadership course and they really benefit from the question series and with their improved thinking, they can take themselves to other places where they generally would not go what they find really valuable and and so so to be to to leave like a meaningful contribution in the direction that i consider to be meaningful too you know um it's not just that i teach somebody how to dress or to how to tie their shoes you know but it's in the direction that i find meaningful and then they have a meaningful experience so it's like a coincidence of those uh, added values so to speak um I feel I feel really rich then, and I have this expression in me also that, um, and I feel like champagne. <laughs> oh, I love it! I don't I don't really mean that I feel like drinking champagne. I mean I love to drink champagne, but I feel the expression that I mean the expression that I actually physically feel like champagne, like it, it bubbles and it wants to go out and. Um, um, Yeah, that that happens, and when I have when I have interactions like that, I always notice the rest of the day. So the rest of my conversations, the rest of my calls, it's all better, and it it has that vibe um, to it. And then I then I feel really rich. Yes, yes. So that's that's like where it all comes together. So that's the purpose, but it's um, it's the purpose, it's the business, but it's also um, you know, as a child, you have this sensation that you want to contribute, that you can contribute, and you have the experience that people do not understand. And so really, I find it a really confusing, no, I found it a really confusing combination, you know? Um, and in moments like that, all that is solved. That's, that makes me feel so rich. Is it also uh, what is called the zone of genius? Or? Yes. Um, yeah, but I, I like that question. I like that question because it gives me inspiration to uh, make a video or something or an ebook or something on that zone of genius. Because yes, it's the zone of genius, but it's also something more um, because it is the, it's the zone of genius and the, um, like if you, it's the existential experience of the relevance of that genius. Right? So I can have a zone of genius. I can be really good at 
making a song. I'm really bad at singing, but I can have that experience. But, but then I can, on an existential level, experience that in the real world, not just in my dream world, but in the real world, that genius matters. It's like the fulfillment of that genius. And then there is relevance to that fulfillment as well. So it's, in, so it's not just fulfillment individually. It's like for other people too. It's not a result. It's not a result. It's a... Exactly. It's exactly. A, it's an, uh, exactly. Being in the moment thing. Yeah. It's like, it's one of those magical buzzes you know you can have like this <laughs> yeah. yeah i i have this feeling like i am here right now you know like that you like totally feel like everything is whoo everything is connected everything is like it, yeah it has to be like that and yes yes it's cool it's a very cool feeling I, because you describe it so well, I feel like you have experienced it <laughs> already. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, I have. For you, girl. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah, I have, yes. And it, that's, I think, is very important to, to remember. Yeah, that's yeah. riches. <laughs> that's riches. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, well, inspiration um, is also something that can make you very rich. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite book of all times and why? Want me to show it to you? No, it doesn't matter because we only do audio. Yeah, so, okay. Um, this is where the nerd comes in, okay? <laughs> yeah, cool. Let, let the nerd in. <laughs> so that would be uh, like the main work of Immanuel Kant. So, uh, Kritiek van de Zuivere Reden. Um, uh, that would be, um, yeah, that would be. Because it, I think it's, I think it's, um, there are still a lot of philosophers disagreeing with him, okay? So, so, it's not like that truth was found and after that the debate was ended forever. Um, but, it is considered as a really important book in the you know, entire history of philosophy. And I think that a lot of criticism, and this you also see more often you know, throughout the history of philosophy, a lot of criticism on the book um, shows to not understand it. Okay, so I think, and I'm not going to, to take the endeavor um, I'm not going to make the endeavor of proving that or writing a book on how all criticism actually doesn't understand. I mean, I don't really see the point in that, but that makes me confident. So, so when I've been reading that book for some time and I wanted to read criticism on the book as well, you know, and that's like, like a philosopher's um, longing almost to, to, to find out where am I wrong? So you're going to read criticism of the theory that you love. And I didn't find a really good criticism. I mean, I understand where they come from, but then I always felt like, yeah, but you just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, that's a, that's, a really, that's a really important book for the content. I think, I think it's very, very, very strong and extremely important. Um, and there's also just the nerdy part that likes the puzzle of it. It's just a very beautiful puzzle. And, you know, I'm also, um, I'm one of those children who had like the big puzzles with a thousand pieces, you know, and then they all look the same and you still want to still wanna finish the thing. I had that. And um, yeah, I also like books like that. Interesting, cool. <laughs> I was just wondering, how do you know that you know? <laughs> but that's maybe too deep question for now. But I was just like, how do you know that you understand? Like yeah. really understand? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question <laughs> to take serious. I mean, I'm not going to try to answer it, but, but it's no. a good question to take no. serious. And actually, I am working on a, uh, on a, 
I think it will be a video um, on doubt. Because ah. in philosophy, doubt is a good thing. But if you want to uh, accomplish stuff, you know, and have impact, doubt is a bad thing. And since I want to connect wisdom and impact, um, there is a positive to doubt. And for the impact, there is a negative to doubt. So, so how to think about doubt so you can have both, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so when you just said that, like, how do you know what you know or how do you know what you really understand? Um, I think those things can be used as a positive aspect of doubt if used in the right way. Yeah, because I experience that myself sometimes that I read something and I'm like, oh, my God, I just get it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> this is too complex for me to understand. But I do understand. Oh, it's, it's just so easy, though. It can be easy like that. Yeah, and then no, in your mind is going like all the No, but I, I hear this often and it always it always hurts me a little bit, you know, um, not personally, but but. I feel that too many people just discard too many theories as too complicated for me. I will never understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, um, I think that the challenge is is not with the reader. I think the challenge is with the author. Ah, okay, yeah. Like it's not, it's not, it's also with like literature. You know, these really complex, layered stories. Da 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 da. And then we go and try to motivate readers to read that stuff. Uh-uh. Yeah. You know, I no. always, no, it's not up to me to stick to an author. It's up to the author to let me stay, make me want yeah. to stay, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I, I put the responsible responsibility at the author's uh, side. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the same thing I experienced at university where I had like uh, um, colleges about um, um, aesthetic rationalization, and then this 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 teacher, he was the professor, he was like um, using like the most complicated words, and I was like, one day I had this epiphany, I think it was, <laughs> I was uh -huh. like, oh shit, you're just saying this. <laughs> and I was like totally like I didn't want to I, I didn't want to do the course anymore because I was like you're just talking bullshit you're just want to make me feel dumb I don't like it <laughs> well but, so what, but what did you yeah, say <laughs> nothing <laughs> he didn't care <laughs> hmm. yeah well okay <laughs> but um, I was also thinking about what you said about um um uh the knowledge and about how you uh with the doubts um yeah. like it depends also on what role you 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 have or you you give yourself like if you are an expert you need to know everything about the subject well people expect that but if you're like a researcher or a curious person and you're just like oh my god i just found out that this new theory or there's whatever and i'm just going to research it then it's a totally different um experience but also uh different expectations because when you're a researcher you can doubt but when you're an expert you maybe need to know i think i think here we need to make a distinction be between inside and outside hmm um because the expert towards the outer world needs to like show what he knows um but on the inside they need doubt too you know in order to become the expert or to to they need to assess what's valuable what's true what's relevant what's irrelevant you know you you, you need to do that as well and i think while well, there's differences i always like the, the distinctions between mastery and experts ah, cool. uh, yeah. right where, where so i think a good expert should want to become a master 
<laughs> or cultivate some kind of excellence. Um, uh, but that's, that's, a, that's an easy statement. If you just put a good expert should want, I mean, that's like, you can yeah. put anything to your, um, uh, to your thought. Uh, and the research, you need to know a lot of things too. Um, there's, the, there's the PhD story that uh, in order to begin, you know, the first things that you do is like closing down certain uh, 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 parameters, uh, setting parameters and, and, and narrowing down your, your, your subject. And for that, you already need to know. And then the big reinsurance is that that is already part of the research. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get where you're going and I think that, um, I think there is, I think inside, outside differs. Yeah. Um, also, there's, there's always something about, I mean, it, it comes down to the question, um, does knowledge age? And it does. I mean, it's a really, 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 um, well, one can, I should not say that. It comes down to the question, does knowledge age? And I think it does. And um, I think we need to reconcile ourselves with the fact that it does. So you constantly need to, we, this, is, this is what I like about, this is a business world quote, like invent yourself and then reinvent yourself. I think you heard it also. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also about, it's also true for philosophy. Like invent yourself, you have to have self, some kind of body of knowledge in order to function and then reinvent yourself like every minute almost, you know, you have to again. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. All right. You're getting a bit carried away, but does it make sense? To you? <laughs> yeah, I, it does. It does. But um, talking about inspiration again, but uh, who is your biggest inspiration? Well, to be honest, Kat, um, I don't know where my inspiration comes from. I just am one of those lucky persons who have who has heaps of it. Congrats! I, I just I don't know. I don't know. I always have ideas. I always have. Um, I just I just look at a thing and I just. It happens, you know. Um, cool. Yeah, and so uh, there's not one person, or 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 I don't have an example for life either. You know, it's I miss that every now and then. By the way, I miss oh. that. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't know everything. I, I many things I don't know, and I just do something. I just try something. But, but then you would love to have like a real life example and you could wonder like, what would Michael Jackson do now? And then I will do the same, you know? <laughs> you can model. <laughs> yeah, you need like, like a model. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, they will help, you know, if you, yeah. if you have like a, the 10th difficult situation and it's still before lunchtime, you know, <laughs> like a model who would be like, how does, how does a person do this? You know? Yeah. yeah. You just have to figure it out yourself. <laughs> that's how I feel. And maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe that's stupid, you know, or it just tells, uh, shows how, 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 um, how I should connect more with people who, have done something similar. I mean, I really, I really love that. And that's also something that I like about the community, by the way, that we really do this together. And that, that you also with, um, also for myself. So it's not that the community and I'm the big guru and all the people with their questions, they can, I have questions too. But, but let's do it together, you know? And there is so much, that can be improved. There is so much that can be more beautiful. There's so much need for forward thinking. Uh, let's be together. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, so that coincides, you know, that, that mission and also that personal need, like, like, like um, I want to connect more with, um, with, with more cool forward thinkers, yes. This is an invitation, people. <laughs> definitely, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you don't have entrepreneurs that are like an example for you or people that you think like, wow, I want to be like them. Mm. Or do you like them or? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I read these. I read some of these autobiographies that are fun. Um, I also <laughs> this little book I never threw out from the the readers digest like unforgettable names, unforgettable deeds, or something like that, with Marie Curie and um, you know it's um, um, I also like the Gandhi story still um, because he so so well applied his deep insights into practice. And uh, like my bureau is called the Bureau for Applied Philosophy. So um, I, I love Gandhi for his art in applying his knowledge, like so consistent that it worked. What? Yeah. No, not pragmatic. No, 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 no. The other, the other direction, please. You know, um, so, so deep principles from the mind put to practice actually works. I, I like that example, but then that's not really an entrepreneur, you know? No, so, so in, the, in the realm of examples and models, it's a, it's a bit of a mess too, but I just, I just like most entrepreneurs, you know? I know a guy who is really building like an empire in um, solar uh, systems. I like talking to him. I mean, he is like a completely different world and he has all these technical problems and I do not have a lot of technical problems. I have other kind of problems. But then I just like the, I like the mindset, you know, of, of everything is possible. I really, yeah. I really, I love that. And yeah. uh, it's, it's so beyond complaining and nagging. It's just, okay, um, let's, let's make it work. But also I like the take your loss. Hmm. If something went wrong, just take your loss. Don't don't get don't get um, grungy or or feel that the world owes you this or that or it was unfair or yes, it's unfair. So what? Now come on, you know, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, so yeah, yeah so it's, it's like the, the entrepreneurial mindset in general that I think I like. Yeah. yeah. And um, Minka, can you like complete <laughs> this sentence? <laughs> if you would really know me, you would know that I dot dot dot. Okay, the first thing that came to mind, I'm not gonna, going to put too much um, sense, sense, censure, we say in Dutch, how you say censure in English? Censorship. censorship. Yes. yes, I'm not going to put too much censorship on it. Yes. Um, if you would really know me, you would know that I would love to make more question series. I, I, really, I really see this as, as an art that um, is so has such a beautiful simple and powerful product that that is that is something that really i feel it right now it really um, it's like everywhere in my body you know it's it's a, it's like a, it's not champagne it, 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 but it's, it's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it just, it's, if you really know me, you would, you would, uh, you would know how that is so me. So I would almost, I could, I could, but I would also almost like doing that, write question series for almost anything. 
what is keeping you? <laughs> well, I am I am writing question series, but not on everything, because there is it's it's, it's a very important question actually that you're asking. I should maybe organize more free time for for myself. And on the other hand, there is a thing called leverage. Um, because if I just have a library full of very nice question series, there's no impact. And I would still be that philosopher with his nerdy hobby in a room. So there's also this, this longing to get out there um, and to, uh, to use what you have. And um, um, we're working on that too, you know, and I think it's important that also timing wise, you know, I have three children, I just turned 40. It's a good timing to, to get out there, you know, it's, it's way too early to withdraw from the world and finish the hobby and wait to die, you know, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. 40 oh my god <laughs> um it's real, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but but i understand well it's 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 also vulnerable because it's your thing it's your gold and and it and you're you're supposed to to give it to the world yeah. but how are you going to do it and you, you want the impact i understand yeah. so that's like holding you back maybe a little but well in it will be it will be uh, one year from now, it will be different, I think, because you're yeah. like on the move. I feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I yeah, think it will yeah. be But I, yeah. I, I like your question also because um, it reminds me, and actually, I've been saying that for quite some months now, I should organize more free time or, or uh, time for just creativity, no matter what else is going on. Yeah, white space yeah. in your agenda. It's yeah, it's, it's yeah. very important. It's very yeah. important. Um, yeah. Um, well, that's a beautiful insight. <laughs> um, what is your biggest insight, or like something you can like, well, give to the people who listen? <laughs> Well, I, I honestly believe that we human beings are supposed to make an effort to get wiser and wiser for it is in line with human evolution. It is in line with how our brain has been evolving throughout history and we, we should so stop with making this dichotomy between feeling and thinking and we should feel and stop the thinking because thinking is failed and life is irrational. That's all BS, okay? That's like BS in capitals because people then just don't understand, okay? So we have to think and feel both. And you need to become very good at both. And um, yeah, that's what we are supposed to do, dear human beings. <laughs> I, I so um, you know I'm so I so see that so so when your mind is bothering you and your thoughts are bothering you, you need to learn to think. You should not not think. It's it's like if you if you fail at ice skating, you can you have the option to give up ice skating, but you cannot give up on thinking because you are a human being. It's like you can't just stop breathing because yeah i don't really like breathing doesn't make sense you know it's like you can't decide you can't give up on thinking like i know many people do it but it is it is such a mistake but there's a difference in thinking and thinking i guess because people would reply now like yeah i think all the time about everything i'm scared of this i'm like in my mind there are like voices <laughs> talking like that's thinking too but that's yeah. not what you mean <laughs> yeah that's having, that's having thoughts yeah <laughs> okay. that's having thoughts and yeah. that's that's the problem because if you don't really think 
you have a lot of thoughts and though they seem like relatively arbitrary and bothersome and most importantly to be ignored and as soon as you will cultivate your mind in a way that you begin to actually think you will find that these thoughts also not only calm down um, but they get better and you might even begin to enjoy them or trust them wouldn't that be amazing that you have this mind that whispers to you what to do and you dare to trust like people say this stuff about your gut well you can also have this in your mind you know that you it's like it's like a schooled mind it's, a, it's the best friend you can have wow cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I that's I honestly believe we should we should do that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Um, Minka, what yes. are you reading, listening to, um, at the moment? All right. So I listen to a lot of American um, uh, business uh, coaches, uh, guys like that. I'm, I'm listening to them um, about uh, sales texts and all, all that type of stuff. And what I'm reading right now, I've been reading it for quite some time, is Heisenberg, uh, the part and the whole. He is like the guy is uh, the guy who was um, closely involved in the invention of the of the bombs in the Second World War. The the atom. I think in English we say atom bombs. The well, the, yeah, I the, think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And but but he's a philosopher too, and his um, philosophy on knowledge is, and that's where I what I get what I find so interesting in in his thinking is that he sees these parallels between uh, ontology, like how things are, so how bombs work how ethics is and how knowledge is built. So he has this, this uh, philosophy on the relationship between parts and the whole that goes on so many different disciplines uh, that he also saw the relevance of. I'm reading that. I love it. <laughs> cool. Wow. And this, it has been published in, in Dutch uh, two years ago, and it was in English already, it was already in German, but, but when it comes to, to uh, more abstract stuff, I like to read the Dutch edition. So, um, yeah, I'm reading that. Nice. It's a good, good tip also, I think. Um, yeah. Did I forget, forget to ask you something? <laughs> and you assume that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, is it something you want to tell? Something yeah, no. Well, share? We did not mention is the the name of the community. That's the Black Sheep Community, um, and I think that uh, name um, uh, tells a lot about also my experience in life as a thinker, um, being filled with inspiration to share the value of my talent with the world. Um, and how hard that can be in a world where often in the direct daily life you do not have the like-minded people. Um, and then there's this huge gift of internet allowing us to make an online community, the Black Sheep community online, where we connect four thinkers around the globe. I mean, think about it. That's just that thought. I love that. Um, building all together their thought leadership um so when people uh like the, the the way i think or just that idea and they have, themselves have ideas that they want to uh, share and make a difference within the world they are very welcome to create like a free membership in that black sheep community online cool so we put uh, the uh, url in the show notes um where can we also find you minka um so there is uh, there is the instagram account at the black sheep community uh, and there is uh, a website minkytromp.com where you that gives like the really overview um we have a podcast um 
we do videos we we but actually we're also still a little bit inventing ourselves um like the thing on doubt you know will it be an ebook will it be a video will it be both will it be an article on linkedin um yeah so yeah we will just stay tuned <laughs> and um well we're going to follow you and uh i already do um <laughs> and i like the community very much it's very nice it's it's like all kind of people it's yeah. not like yeah you like all levels and it's yeah it's growing growing it's very interesting so uh, a very inspiring minka so thank you for that um and thank you for this beautiful insights you gave us and a little bit more about yourself thank you thank you i really love doing it and um i also like how our um collaboration or our connection you know it's uh, it was nice because while we were talking i got back to miami also every now and then so yeah thank you for that too it was nice to to feel that connection again cool it was so nice in Miami. Yes, <laughs> I feel a little. I feel a little homesick. <laughs> ah, I understand. It was just three days, but it was yeah, inspirational. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, you. Uh, Minka. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And um, well, just um, uh, let me know if you have questions. And um, till next time, bye bye. <laughs>